And we're back with a fabulous technical segment titled Universal Plug and Play Hacking for Penetration Testers. Done by myself because I wanted to hack into my TV. Will this be more exciting than screen? Wait a minute. Didn't you know this what? start out, though, like like, like you know a what? month ago with the pen test that we were on, though? I'm sorry. I'm throwing things at Darren. God uh, damn it. Um, and Larry's throwing Darren, things you at bastard. You. Quit being a target. Excuse me. So previously we covered Universal Plug and Play Discovery with Nmap using screen. Uh, so <laughs> the uh, uh, command Nmap space dash P, capital P, lowercase n, space dash, lowercase n, dash dash, script equals broadcast will actually go out on the broadcast address and discover all kinds of hosts. Now, I noticed that the Nmap team has been hard at work. Dave, maybe if we could bring the show notes up on the video uh, laptop and zoom in, you can see my commands there on the live video coming up shortly. Um, Nmap team has added some functionality. I, I picked up one thing. It can actually discover that Dropbox has been in use because there's a broadcast Dropbox listener that Nmap will go out there and find. So you can discover hosts that are live on the network and running Dropbox just by using Nmap using the command that I have there in the show notes. Um, so that was just kind of an update on my previous segment because I thought I was like running the command and I'm like, you know, I thought I talked about it before. You're going to have to zoom in a little more, Dave, so they can see it. Hit uh, control plus a couple times in there and zoom in on that bad boy and you'll be able to see some of my commands up there. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, no, scroll. Go to the right. Go to the right. Up, up, up. We're good. All right, so uh, universal plug and play, discovery and control with Backtrack 5 in a tool that I discovered called Miranda. Because I'm still fascinated with what information can be gathered from passive sniffing, I decided to take a deeper dive into universal plug and play. Because um, I know I have some devices on my network, such as my TV, my receivers actually plug into the internet, uh, the network, uh, Roku players. I found a tool called Miranda. Written in 2008, comes on Backtrack 5. My mission that I set out to do on this technical segment is be able to mute my TV remotely from the network. No infrared controls in involved. I wanted to be able to remotely mute my TV. So here's how I did it. I ran the Miranda tool, which comes uh, on Backtrack 5 in the slash pen test enumeration Miranda directory. It's a Python script. Uh, written to interface with a whole bunch of universal plug-and-play stuff. So you start it up and you get a prompt that says UPnP. The first thing you do is M search. That enters a discovery mode, which will find all the universal plug-and-play devices on the network. Now, I've trimmed down the list that I have there, but basically it'll tell you which host they got an SSDP reply from, where the XML file is located, and briefly what the device is running. You can see I've got a Roku device there. I've got some embedded Linux devices on there as well. As well. Um, so, um, you, you generally, interesting. You think you could generalize commands and script them on um, on the network as well, because there's so many hosts on the network. They all give up their URLs. You could do some interesting things with scripting here. Um, now you can list out the host that you've discovered with the host space list command. This lists all of the individual hosts that were found during discovery. So you hit control C to stop the discovery and then you can go back and start entering commands again. I use the host get command to read the entire tree of universal plug and play commands. So that one XML file will tell you, um, you know, here are the basically libraries that I have uh, to run commands or interface with settings on my, um, on my on the host. So I do host get five. And it says requesting uh, device and service information for this host could take a few minutes. Takes that host data enumeration, gives you a message and says, says it's complete. You can also run the host summary command. So you say host space summary space five, which is the device in the list that corresponds to that. And you get all kinds of information about the host. Now here, my receiver and my TV, same exact commands in order to be able to mute them. They implement the same libraries. Really? Yeah, which is what I was saying before, right? It's interesting to be able to script some of this stuff. If you were to find some similar functionality in these devices, such as remotely being able to change them as DNS server, uh -huh. might be interesting to script that stuff. Um, 
So uh, you can then run the host info command, which gives you further information. I mean, I got my kernel, Linux kernel version, running on my receiver is 2.6.33-rc4, which I thought was interesting. Um, so it leaks the Linux kernel version. So a lot of uh, enumeration. And I find a lot of people that find universal plug and play in the network will use it primarily for host enumeration and information gathering. But now we're going to start delving into some of the ways in which you can actually change the configuration or behavior of a device over universal plug and play. So Miranda supports the ability to save this information. And this is important. You can save the structure and the information about the device using the save command. So you can say save data, then say onkyo, save data info 5, which means host 5, save that information to a file. And inside this file, it's going to give you a complete listing of all the commands. So what you do is you save that to a file, then you open up the file in a different window, and you can look through and say, oh, look, I can mute, I can change the volume, I can change the contrast, I can, um, you know, initiate World War III, I can melt the nuclear reactor, <laughs> whatever you want to do on this device will show up in those files. So you can save that information uh, out to a file. And there's an example of what that information looks like uh, up there on the, on the live stream. So now we'll start to execute commands, passing it the service ID, the tag, and the command. So I do host send, media render, rendering control, get mute. And what that does is it accesses the XML elements within Universal Plug and Play and is able to get the settings from the host. So uh, it needs some arguments. Now, what I found is when I did get mute for the first time, it said, well, what's my instance ID? And I'm like, I don't know. One, two, three. I don't know. I was Four, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. One, two, three. Yeah, I was guessing, right? So I did some Google searching. There's actually people taking advantage of these open uh, universal plug and play APIs, as it were and have got some information about what they found out. So I found that instance ID 0 seems to work on my particular devices, and Google told me that. Um, then it says set channel value to, and my options were either master, LF, or RF. So I chose master. Master then said, uh, so using those values of instance ID 0 and um, the uh, channel value of master, it said my current mute value is 0. Now, doing some research, I realized that current mute value is a Boolean. So it's a 0 or a 1. So I'm like, well, 0 must mean it's not muted, obviously. So what happens if I run a similar command and I set mute to 1? So I ran a similar command. I said, host send, me to render, rendering options, set mute. It said, what's your instance ID? I said, well, Google told me it should be 0, so it's 0. Then I said, my desired mute argument name is 1 and my control channel, channel value is master. I did that, I pushed enter, I stepped out of my office, I looked at my TV, and it was muted. And then I nice. did the happy dance. So I was like, ah, Now, it's not really like a huge impact that you can mute someone's TV over the internet mm -hmm. or the network. I mean, that's kind of fun. Their TV has to be on and they have to be watching it. But what was more interesting for me was that if a device, any kind of device, has a universal plug and play, and it's open, using this Miranda Python script, I can change values. And the examples they have in the Miranda code are routers that have this open, mm -hmm. and you can change the default route, yep. for example, yep. or do all kinds uh, of evil, and, nasty and, and things, and right? Like your TV, I'd argue, well, you want to set the mute value, but what other functions are available when the TV is off, like turn it on? Yeah, yeah. I, no, I wasn't able, when it's off, my TV and I don't, is off. It's not on the network. The network interface goes off. Um, so as opposed to like standby, as opposed to standby, which I'm sure is supported. Now I should mention here that I had to modify the source code to make it work. I mean, mm -hmm. the code's from 2008. Um, there was a logic flaw where when it was sending the post request to actually change the, or read the values, um, or change the values, it wasn't putting in the fully qualified path. So my code changes are in there. I noticed that my Universal plug and play like XML commands needed the IP address colon port slash DMR slash and then the structure of the universal plug and play commands. When I was sending commands, you know, after some packet sniffing and, and realization that it was leaving out the DMR directory because it was kind of like a bug in the code. So, I mean, really, you should read that value dynamically. What I did was I cheated. I went inside the source code and I said, okay, where is it building the URL? 
and I guessed it, some Python syntax, and I, based on some other lines of code that were like before and after it, and I'm like, well, what if I just append this value and then put the rest of the URL in an inserted my string that I needed in the URL, and I was able to mute my value in my TV. So I did have to muck with the source code a little bit. Someone smarter than me, or maybe even emailing the person that wrote the code, could probably update it that it fixes this problem you know, on the fly and actually applies proper logic. I was just being lazy hacker programmer. And I was like, I just want to make it work. So I made a copy of the code that works with my TV, <laughs> essentially. Because that's how we roll as, as pen testers and hackers. So good Lord, I hope there's no SCADA devices implementing this protocol. However, oh, don't worry, because you said it, that means there is. However, they have control channels very similar and without authentication. I mean, this is the same kind of stuff that they're doing with SCADA devices, right? Is you're looking at this proprietary control channel. I mean, you're essentially reverse engineering it and figuring out what values need to be sent. And maybe instead of muting the TV, as is in my case, you're opening up a valve that's mixing sewage with the water supply or something like that. I, that, that, I don't know if that could really happen, but in any case. Um, Would you like to have some poo poo? Yes. So... My code change was a wicked hack, as I called it. And um, I encourage everyone to go run this on your network, right? I mean, this tool is really cool. It'll sit there and listen and discover for as long as you let it and let you interact with the universal plug and play devices. Now, there is another tool that Carlos Perez and I um, were talking, and Carlos said, hey, there's this UPnP inspector tool. What's that? Two commands. If you run them on Backtrack 5, you have this full GUI operationally functional on Backtrack 5 that does everything that I just talked about in a nice fancy GUI. You can click on stuff and it'll give you a little prompt. I didn't put any screenshots in there. I, mean, I was going to say, yeah, it says blow with some screenshots. Blow some screenshots that don't exist yet. But, you know, the screenshots are, you go get Backtrack 5, run those two commands, and initiate UPnP Inspector, and you can see that you can double click on stuff you can send the command, so like it gives you a little message box that says, what do you want the values to be? And you push a button, and it sends those commands off. So, you, PNP Inspector is out there as well for your downloading and GUI enjoyment. Oh, the advantage of you, PNP Inspector, is you can actually browse the file system. There are universal plug-and-play um, extensions that actually lets you browse the file system. So for pen testers on the internal network, right, what does it take to run this, install this tool on Backtrack 5, the next time you go do an internal assessment, fire it up, and go start clicking through the list and go, oh, hey, look, I can browse the file system and download files. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, that's something that, you know, the scanning tools may give you an indication that there's stuff there, but now here are the tools to go do stuff with it, which I think is really cool. And that's kind of the next thing I was looking for, I had never really found any good tools uh, to help me out with that. Yeah. Um, now there's one included in Backtrack and one that's really easy to install inside Backtrack. And hopefully us talking about on the show leads them to include it. So. Very nice. That'd be, that would rock. So that is my technical segment. So go explore Universal Plug and Play because you can do more than just mute your TV. You can do all kinds. Of, there was a message function I was playing with. Like I totally wanted to like have messages come up on my TV. Because, like, I wanted to mess with my family. And, like, as they were watching TV, put up messages like, go get me a beer. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm still working on that. Sudo, go get me a beer. Oh, Su no, yeah. wait, wait. Dot slash percent S minus capital D9, D5. There you D9, go. Get me a beer. There you go. Very cool. So, with that, we'll take a short little break here and come back and talk about the stories for this week.